Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today I'm going to give a bit of a guide on how to get to the ancient alien ruins and what to do when you get there. Now a lot of people have asked many different questions and it seems people are having a bit of difficulty in locating it and knowing what to do when you get there. So first thing you need to do is come to Felix Dock here in the main system. When you dock you'll get the mission from Rum Tar and you can see that the mission, if you complete it, is worth 100 million credits. So I won't go over too much the same material here as previously, most of this should be new footage. So you do need to have a little bit of consideration to your loadout, but nothing too serious. But do go with a fuel scoop, you might want a cargo rack, you certainly will need a planetary vehicle hanger. And don't forget to load it up with an SRV, and don't forget the discovery scanner, that is pretty much essential. Without a discovery scanner, you're going to have a bit of trouble locating the planet. Here is the system you need, I'll link that in the video description, so you can just copy and paste it straight into the galaxy map here. You can see the system is just 240 light years away from the station that we're docked at. So it doesn't take too long, my Cobra here only has a relatively low jump range of 21 light years. I do believe that you can get here with more or less any ship. So the location of the planet that we're looking for is planet 1b. If you go straight to the system map without a discovery scanner from the comments, I know a few people have done that. All you'll see initially are the brown dwarf stars here. So use your discovery scanner and the moons will come available. They're listed alphabetically, moon 1a, moon 1b, moon 1c and so on. We want moon 1b. It won't actually list the name there yet on the system map because we won't have done a surface scan of the planet. But we can work it out because of the standardized numbering system that the game uses. Now when we found the moon here, the next thing we want to do is locate the ruins themselves. And you can do this quite easily. Radio Sidewinder have made a great guide on this. Look for the massive crater on the planetary surface and then you can follow a pathway across the planet and I'll show you how to do this. I will link this image in the video description and whilst you're at it, do check out Radio Sidewinder. So there on the planetary surface you can see the massive crater and just follow the arrows that are on the image. Now what you will need are the coordinates for the ruins. They're minus 31, minus 128. As soon as you get into orbital cruise, the coordinates will appear. You can fly and level over the planet, but I prefer to go on my side here because it gives me a much better visuals of the planetary surface itself. So you can see that the numbers down on the bottom right of the heads up display there change as two minus numbers. One of them, the top one, is currently decreasing. And all the time I head towards 180 degrees, you can see that at the top of my heads up display, it will keep increasing. If I flip right around 180 degrees and head zero degrees, that number will now decrease. The top coordinates is actually decreasing. So that's how you can increase and decrease those particular numbers. And to move across the other axis, the one that's currently shown as minus 114, this is all longitude latitude by the way, you simply head at 90 degrees and you can see that bottom set of numbers now decreasing. So if you visualize this as a clock face with 0 degrees at the 12 o'clock, uh, 90 degrees at 3 o'clock, 180 degrees at 6 o'clock, and I'm going to flip now to 270 degrees which would be at 9 o'clock. And that then moves us across on the other axis, you can see that number increases. So this is how you get yourself to a specific set of coordinates. Fortunately for us here for the alien ruins it's a little bit easier because we've got some visual cues. Remember the radio sidewinder image, head towards a large crater and then orientate yourself along the green line or the green arrow that radio sidewinder have on that image. And I'm going to do that right here and we can simply descend down towards the planet surface here. This particular clip is accelerated a bit because it does take a few minutes to descend down there and I don't want you waiting around too long for that. But you can see, because I had my ship already correctly orientated, focusing towards the correct location on the planet here, I don't have to move around too much. The ruins are located at the top of this small crater here, and you can't see them from too far away, unfortunately. You used to be able to see them from quite a distance, but from the latest patch, something seems to have changed, and they don't resolve themselves until they get a little bit closer. Also on the downside, I'm actually approaching the planet or the alien ruins during the night cycle, so it makes visibility a little bit lower. It'll be a bit easier if you come at the daytime. And here you can see we've arrived at the alien ruins without any trouble locating it at all. Very, very easy. Made all the easier, of course, by that amazing visual guide. So to complete this mission, we need to solve a puzzle. And the puzzle itself is embedded into the ancient alien ruins here. There's a load of obelisks dotted around the site. You can see them right there in front of my ship. And there's a few so-called ancient relics. 
these will pop up out of the ground when you approach them. The other thing we need are the objects, the ancient objects, and they come in various types. You've got an urn, a casket, a totem, and a tablet as well as an orb. And you can locate these around the alien site. Using the map here helps you locate these much easier. And I'll link that again in the video description. All of these images can be located on the forum thread, the massive Canon Research forum thread, and I'll link that in the video description. And I just want to give a shout out to everyone involved in creating all this stuff. It's an immense help to the community and a big help to me. So as soon as you leave your ship, you can get out in your SRV and pick up a few of those objects. In my case, I picked up a casket and an orb. Here's where it starts to get a bit tricky though. You'll remember the obelisks, you can see them there in the background, and the ancient relics I talked about. Well, they need to be scanned using your SRV scanner, whilst you've got a combination of the ancient objects inside your cargo hold. So you'll either get a successful scan or a failed scan. And this was determined by the correct or incorrect combination of objects you've got inside your cargo hold when combined with the relic or the obelisk that you're scanning. So due to the number of items that are involved here, the number of permutations, the number of combinations actually arranges well into the multiple hundreds. Fortunately, the community have come together and are documenting all the combinations that seem to be successful. And you can see that on this spreadsheet right here. So here's a shout out to Zenith, Flock, Cal and Commander Cal Tran for making all of this possible. I'll link this spreadsheet in the video description below so you'll be able to access that. Now all of the obelisk clusters are broken down into various groups. You can see them labelled on the little map and each letter of the uh, groups corresponds to a separate sheet or a separate page on the spreadsheet here. We've got group A, B, C, D and so on. And as we flick through each of these pages, you'll see that there's a column representing each of the objects. And there's also a row representing another lot of the objects. And this allows you to see what happens when you combine a casket and an orb, for example, or a casket and an urn. So let's head on over to group G. I've got a casket and an orb in my cargo hold. And we're going to scroll down to see where there's a match for that particular combination. So as we scroll down here, we can see there is a match at obelisk 17. But there's a various information there. There's a cross there which suggests it may not work for everyone. So let's go down and have a look a bit further. Obelisk 20. We've got a green confirmation here which says we should get some decoded data for this combination when scanning at that particular obelisk. So where is Obelisk 20 then on Group G? Well, there's a nice set of maps here. We can see that Group G is over on the far left side, the top left side of the uh, ruins and let's scroll down and we'll get a bit of a closer look at group G and here you can see that each of the obelisks is numbered and we want number 20 which is that one there so it's time to head on over to that obelisk and give it a scan with the SRV let's see what happens now the only obelisks you can scan are the ones that activate they highlight a funny green color and you'll notice that as we get right up close, they show or display some triangular symbols. This is obelisk number 19. We're going to scan this just to see what happens when you scan an incorrect obelisk. And you'll see you don't get any message at all. Sometimes you will get a message which will just tell you that you're scanning the wrong combination or the wrong obelisks. And there you can see I've got the casket and the orb in my cargo hold, just as I said. So let's scan obelisk number 20, which is the one behind this current one. Now, unfortunately, when you make a mistake and scan the wrong obelisk, it actually deactivates. And the only way I've found to reactivate it, at least when you're f uh, playing in solo mode, is to log out and log back in again. But apparently, on open mode, that isn't a problem, and they do reactivate after a certain period of time. At any rate, here is obelisk 20. We're scanning it with the combination of items in our cargo hold. And you can see uh, there we've got an incoming message. A bit of information about the ancient guardians. Apparently the alien race that constructed this place. It seems there may be up to a hundred combinations here. We'll have to scan all of them to get the entire 100 million credit reward. So I suspect that's going to take a very long time indeed. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.